A tropical storm Asayez has strengthened into a Category 1 hurricane, and it's expected to make landfall in Florida this weekend. Asayez is currently approaching the Bahamas, where recovery efforts are still underway nearly a year after Hurricane Dorian devastated parts of the Caribbean. It battered the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico yesterday and could eventually reach states on the U.S. East Coast already badly affected by the coronavirus pandemic. So we want to bring in Jeff Berardelli. Jeff, you are a CBS uh, meteorologist and climate specialist. Uh, let's start off with uh, what do we know about this Category 1 hurricane right now? Yeah, so it's barely a Category 1. It was almost downgraded to a tropical storm. It, you know, it had a surge in its energy last night. Winds were way up there, it became a hurricane out of nowhere, and then it kind of weakened a little bit. It was pulsing. So that's why it keeps, it's on the borderline of a hurricane to a tropical storm because energy is pulsing, thunderstorms are developing and then decaying and developing and decaying. Uh, the storm right now is located in the southeast Bahamas. It's kind of a disheveled mess at this moment, and we like disheveled messes because they're not very organized. However, mm -hmm. odds are because water temperatures are really warm, this storm is probably going to get its act together and maybe strengthen a little bit. The official forecast from the National Hurricane Center as it approaches Florida uh, has it strengthening a little bit, possibly to a 90-mile-an-hour storm, so a strong Cat 1, maybe, maybe even eventually uh, as it moves up the eastern seaboard, perhaps at some point a Cat 2. Um, okay, so there's a potential for its strengthening, but it's disorganized, which is how we like it. Um, is this sort of typically the beginning of the hurricane season? Is this kind of a normal start? Yeah, so, you know, the official start of hurricane season is June 1st. Um, but generally speaking, the real meat of the, uh, of the year, the core of, of hurricane season, starts in the middle of August. We're about three weeks early. And that's because water temperatures are blazing hot across all the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, this is like steroids for storms. Temperatures uh, off of the southeast coast are around 3 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. Temperatures off the northeast coast, New York City, Long Island, uh, 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. So when you have such warm water temperatures, that's partly due, by the way, to climate change. We've warmed the oceans, the background of the oceans, by 1 to 2 degrees or so. And then you add on top of it favorable weather patterns that make for warm waters, like, like heat waves like we've had. Uh, and you end up with a situation where you have all this extra fuel for the possibility of strengthening storms, and we tend to see that. Uh, although the atmospheric conditions, Anne-Marie, are not exactly perfect for strengthening, a lot of wind shear in certain parts of the atmosphere, so that may inhibit it. So as of now, it's forecast to become a Cat 1, maybe a, a Cat 2. And the worst of it in Florida is going to be tomorrow. So uh, during the day on Saturday, it approaches South Florida, and then Sunday, it approaches Cape Canaveral. Most of the models have it tracking just east, keeping the hurricane force wind just east of Florida. However, uh, the European model, which is one of our best models from last night, says that it could actually make a landfall in Florida, although it has a weaker system. That's Generally, what happens is it's a weaker system. It goes a little further south. Um, and its closest approach to Florida looks like Cape Canaveral on Sunday. And, and there, hurricane force winds could graze the Cape. Again, but this may change. It's definitely subject to change. And I'll just kind of go further, Anne-Marie, as to where it's going to go after that. Again, water temperatures mm -hmm. several degrees above normal uh, to the east of, of the, Car uh, the Carolinas, southeast of the Carolinas, east of Georgia. It has a chance of, of either maintaining its intensity or even strengthening before it hits North Carolina. We do think at this point it's likely to make a landfall somewhere in the Carolinas, more likely North Carolina, and that would be uh, likely later Monday. And then maybe even Long Island and, and Southeast New England on Tuesday, late Tuesday, Tuesday night. It's conceivable it could be either a very strong tropical storm or maybe even a minimal hurricane by then. And again, it's all due to water temperatures being really, really warm for this time of year. Mm hmm. So even though we're saying, you know, Cat 1, possibly Cat 2, is there still cause for concern? I mean, what kind of damage can a Category 1 hurricane do? Yeah, so first of all, we say Cat 1, but we tell you to prepare for Cat 2. That's the general rule of thumb. Mm. And it could even be stronger than that. There's, there's no reason why this couldn't be a, a stronger system. It couldn't become a Cat 3. It, it's possible. The models don't show it, but the water's certainly warm enough. Uh, if you remember, just about a week ago, we had Hannah hit um, Texas. If it had another day, it would have been a big, big, big problem because it was strengthening when it hit landfall. And that's an important point, Anne-Marie. When the storms have a momentum upward, when they're strengthening when they hit land, they produce a lot more damage than an equivalent storm that's weakening when it hit land because its momentum is on the way up, and then it has to kind of level off, and then it can start to weaken. So the point is, is yeah, 
First of all, you can see you know, rainfall up to 10 inches in some places, especially in the Carolinas. And in addition, if it's a strengthening storm when it hits land, yeah, we could see damage in power outages. All right, all good to know. Uh, could be a cat one, but always prepare for the worst. Prepare for a cat too. Jeff Ferradelli, thank you very much. Exactly. You're welcome.